Hey traders, welcome to another video collaboration between Options Trading IQ and Bar Chart. My name is Gavin McMaster. I'm the founder of Options Trading IQ. And today we're going to be delving into volatility, which is a really important topic for option traders. Before we do that, just a quick disclaimer that everything discussed is for educational purposes, is general in nature and does not take into account your personal circumstances. So implied volatility is a hugely important concept for beginner option traders. We could spend all day talking about volatility, but for today, we'll focus on implied volatility. With stocks, you can make money if the stock moves up or down, but options provide such amazing flexibility, you can profit in a multitude of different environments. Of course, with that flexibility comes more risk. Typically, when a trader buys a call option, they make money when the stock rises. But did you know, sometimes you can lose money on a long call even if the stock rises. This can happen if there's a large drop in implied volatility, say for example, after an earnings announcement. Let's look at some key concepts related to implied volatility. When it comes to the price of an option, when implied volatility rises, option prices will rise. Likewise, when implied volatility falls, option prices will fall. This assumes no other change in any of the other parameters. So there's no movement in the share price or interest rates and no passage of time. Basically, volatility goes up, everything else stays the same, option prices go up. Volatility goes down, everything else remains the same, option prices go down. Therefore, it stands to reason that buyers of options, those that are long either calls or puts, will benefit from increased volatility and sellers will benefit from decreased volatility. Here's a theoretical example to demonstrate the idea. Let's look at a stock with a price of 100. If we consider a six month call option with a strike price of 100, so an at the money call option, if the implied volatility is 90, the option price might be say 25. If implied volatility is 50, the option price might be about $15. And if the implied volatility is only 30, the option price might be about $9. So you can see there, we've got a six month call option with a strike price of 100 and the stock at 100. Those things remain the same. When we look at different levels of implied volatility, it can make a big difference in the value of that option. Stocks with high vol implied volatility will trade with high option prices. Implied volatility measures how much a stock is expected to move in the future. This is an unknown thing because no one can predict the future. So traders and market makers estimate how much the stock might move. This can be based on past behavior and any upcoming events for that company like earnings. Historical volatility on the other hand measures how much the stock has moved in the past. This is a known thing. When implied volatility is high compared to historical volatility, traders might look to sell volatility via short volatility trades, such as an iron condor. When implied volatility is low compared to historical volatility, then traders might look to go long volatility via long straddles or strangles, or even a reverse iron condor. So that brings us to the concept of implied volatility percentile. How do we know if a stock has high or low volatility compared to its past. Well, here we can see a graph of JP Morgan. We've got the stock price in gray on the left-hand axis, and then we've got the white line represents the implied volatility on the right axis. We can see that implied volatility has ranged between about 20% and about 44% over the last 12 months. And it's currently sitting at 20.8%. So that gives, JP Morgan, pretty much an implied volatility percentile of zero because it's basically the lowest level of implied volatility we've seen in the last 12 months. So we could say that right now, options on JP Morgan are quite cheap. So we might look to buy options or trade strategies that are long volatility. Volatility is a bit like a stock. We want to buy low and sell high, or we can do the opposite where we sell high and buy low. In this case with JP Morgan, volatility is very, very low compared to its recent past. Could be a good time to be long volatility in JP Morgan. 
On the other hand, we've got Activision, and this is, tells a very different story. At the moment, the implied volatility percentile is 100%. This is the highest level of implied volatility that we've seen in this stock for the last 12 months. So potentially it could be a good time to look at selling volatility on this stock. Volatility is high when there's a big event coming up like earnings. Once earnings have passed, volatility drops down again because the uncertainty has been removed. Here we can see a really good example from back in 2021 on FedEx. We can see volatility rising into the earnings announcement and then dropping severely afterwards. Similar in Q2, we get a rise in volatility, the earnings announcement gets re released and there's a big drop. We can see that four times throughout the year. So there's a big drop in volatility each time after that earnings release. We might call that an IV crush. You might have heard that term before. Basically, all the volatility comes out of those options after earnings. And we've written articles on Bar Chart and also Options Trading IQ on how you can trade options around earnings and profit from that IV crush. As well as the stock having a general level of implied volatility, every single option strike will have its own level of IV. Generally, the further out in time we go, the higher the implied volatility. This is because with more time, there is more chance that something bad can happen. This is called contango. It's a funny word, but don't let that scare you. Um, it's pretty easy when you look at some examples. So here we're looking at the implied volatility on SPY options. We've got some very short-term options with only a couple of days to expiry. And then we've got our regular monthly expiries out to December. You can see that options, these call options at the money call options with not much time until expiry has about 13 to 16% volatility. And the further out in time we go, the higher the implied volatility gets. With more time, there's more chance that something bad could happen. So the implied volatility is higher. Now that's a normal market situation. Again, that concept of contango where short dated options have lower volatility than long dated options, that's called contango. And that's a normal market scenario. Uh, the opposite is called backwardation. Again, don't let that term worry you too much. Uh, but that's when the opposite happens, when we get a, a big volatility spike. And what happens is those short term options, the volatility goes through the roof, but the longer term options aren't really impacted as much because traders think, well, there's a, there's a bit of panic going on at the moment, but in a few weeks or a few months time, that's going to settle down and the volatility will come back to normal levels. As well as volatility being different through time, which is what we're just looking at, that's called horizontal skew. It can also be different across strikes. So that's called vertical skew. Generally, implied volatility is high for far out of the money puts because people are willing to pay more for crash protection. This is especially true for the Russell 2000 index which tends to fall severely during market corrections. So this is from a few years ago, um, IWM, which is the Russell 2000 ETF. I think at the time was trading about 195. And you can see when we go down in strikes, all these puts that are really far out of the money, the implied volatility gets really, really high. Now, some of these options down here would be worth basically nothing. So we can almost discount those ones, but you kind of get the idea that the further out in time we go, sorry, the further out in the strikes that we go, the higher the volatility people are willing to pay for that crash protection. Out of the money puts having high volatility is not always the case. Here we see Tesla volatility from a few years ago when it was actually skewed to the upside. This is because traders were aggressively buying out of the money calls to try and profit from the rising stock price. You might remember that time where you know, Tesla was on this massive bull run seemed to be going up every day. Lots and lots of traders were buying call options. So there was a huge demand for call options. You can see here, I think at the time, Tesla was about 535. About here, out of the money call options were trading with really high implied volatility because there was a lot of demand which push, uh, pushed up the prices of those call options. At the moment, um, we can see here some volatility skew in the S&P 500 or SPY ETF. 
at the money puts about 15, 16% volatility. And as we go further out of the money, the implied volatility starts to rise. So there you have a little bit of a quick tutorial on volatility. If you've got any questions on that, just let me know. Um, you can find me at optionstradingiq.com um, or on Twitter. Hope you enjoyed the video and we'll talk again soon.